Stocks just flipped, but you might be wondering, can we trust this move? Why? I'm wondering the exact same thing myself. So stay tuned and I'll walk you through the top two clues I'll be watching into the end of the week. After earnings, Tesla, Visa, Texas Instruments, and other companies are up. And Elon might have the last laugh here. The bar was so low that it looks like the company was able to report a miss or the biggest slide in revenue since 2012 and still get a positive reaction. So what's the joke here? Well, they pre-announced a lot of the news and all they had to do was really say that actually Wall Street, we do have a focus to renew the push for affordable cars. Why? Well, they missed on earnings, they missed on revenue, but Wall Street cares about forward estimates, which is exactly what we hear from Bloomberg as well. Tesla gains as EV maker says it'll accelerate affordable models. So the earnings weren't that great. And I think a lot of this will come down to what Elon Musk has to say on the earnings call. So are these gains going to hold? Are they going to go higher? Are they going to go lower? Stay tuned and I'll walk you through my best guess. So if we looked at Tesla year to date, it's down by 42%. It's either the worst decliner or one of the worst. So I would not say things are good at Tesla yet. They're just less bad. So it means that the stock was priced for right uh, a dumpster fire and it doesn't look like things are that bad. There's even a little bit of hype here. They spent a billion dollars on AI in the last three months. In other news, the FTSE closes at a uh, FTSE 100 closes at a record high, highest level since February of 2023, and it closed green again, which, which means another record high. But let's move forward to those two big things I wanted to talk about. The two big clues that I am going to be watching for: our system, the Elgo, found 176 one-day ideas today. But more importantly. We want to look at QQQ and SPY. We got trade alerts for a three-week window of opportunity on the one-day time frame. And we get targets and stops here. I did the work. I have them right here. There's our stop for S&P. There's our target. There's our stop for QQQ. There's our target. I'm going to come back to both of these. And this is what really matters because at a high level, I've been talking about the potential for a head and shoulders, knees and toes. And we are saying, not we, our system, the ELGO was saying that we have a target here for SPY at 518.98, or basically uh, right here. So if, if we rally all the way to here, well, that's basically going to be at our neckline. So we're going to find out whether or not the rip is for selling or if it's not. That's really it. It's that simple. So we talked about the red light yesterday, the green light. Well, we're not in either. We're actually at a yellow light. What do you do at a yellow light? Well, you either put your foot on the on the gas or you put your foot on the brake. It's one or the other. So the reason why this matters is because we've now recaptured 504, which means we fall back inside a yellow light. So the easiest way to try to explain this is that we had a monthly lower low, but now we're back above. It's a failed breakdown. The month's not closed out yet, but my bull thesis really hinged on one thing. I told you what proved me wrong, a monthly lower low, but notably closing below. So we have a piece of evidence and I need to see this into the close of the month. We also need to see QQQ hold into Friday back above 413. It's looking constructive right now, but this market moves fast and things could change by Friday. Why? Well, the market's getting a little bit less fearful, moving closer to neutral, but we're not there yet. And we have a lot of key data this week, GDP, PCE, and we summarized all that here. So all we've done this week so far is get through PMI and new homes, and we got through Tesla. There's still a lot on the docket this week with the most important data point coming in on Friday. So now start to tell me exactly what the system means. But just before I do that, I'm going to ask you for a huge favor. If you could please consider smashing that thumbs up and subscribing to the channel, that would be greatly, greatly appreciated. So what I want to do first, before we look at these levels here, is just to frame things where I want to make it easy to understand. So we got a red light. That basically means that we printed that monthly lower low, which I just showed you. But now since we've recaptured and we're at uh, 505 plus, what it means is that we don't focus on the red green. We focus on caution. Caution means we don't know what's going to happen. So what that really means is that we want to see where we close the week out because like I said, we need to hold until the end of the month. It's currently only April 23rd. So we have to wait until the end of the month. If we can't close strong this week, how are we going to do it into the end of the month? Because both the S&P and QQQ levels I'm looking at. This is a 12-month chart. We're going all the way back to 2023 with our bounce. So what I'm really wondering here, if I start to remove uh, the stuff that I laid out before, let me just get rid of all this. What I want to show you here, um, and on Tesla, we're actually filling multiple gaps here. So we'll get to QQQ in one second. 
Um, but what I want to show you is that we've now filled one, two uh, holes. I want to know whether or not we're going to get a gap and go tomorrow. Why? Well, gap ups are usually for selling. So what's going to happen with Tesla? Do we hold the gains? Do we sell them off? But now going here to QQQ, and uh, let's actually go here to a fourth board. Sorry for not having this prepared ahead of time. Let's go here. Let's slap that. Um, for me, all this is so far is a dead cat bounce. So right here at 413, we know that's a blue sky area. Let's look to a daily chart. Why? Well, because all we have so far, you can see here, right? Come down, boop, dead cat bounce. It's not enough. We got to see where the higher low goes. The higher low is going to tell us whether or not we're forming higher lows and higher highs or if this is just a dead cap bounce before we roll over and lose those key areas. It's that simple. Don't overcomplicate it. So like I say, there's going to be a lot of noise this week. Focus on levels. Noise is going to come from inflation, earnings, earnings, GDP, the Fed, all that crap. So what do we do? We focus on levels. Let's do that. Okay, so now that we understand that this is really important, um, just before we go to S&P and QQQ, I want to show you that our system found 176 individual ideas that held that have good risk reward, which means we're trying to rally. We're trying to go up. But as we note, there is not momentum in every group right now. This group is quite red, but excluding this group and Tesla, it's doing okay. And earnings so far are giving us a positive reaction. But we need to see broader participation than just S&P and QQQ. But since that's what most uh, what most traders focus on, that's what we're going to focus on. So now let's go through. So this is really simple for me. Like I said, head and shoulders. How do we invalidate a head and shoulders? Well, um, it's really simple. We need to break it, break the neckline. So remember, I talked about a couple step recipe here. Let me go back to S&P on the one day chart because this will complement what I'm showing over here. We need to reclaim the 50 DMA. How can we do that? Well, if we get to our target, we're going to reclaim the 50 DMA. It's a target. It's not a guarantee. So please rem remember that. But this is over 510. So over 510 would be good. If we make it to our target, we have to watch what the reaction is. Just like a yellow light. Did it just turn yellow? Has it been yellow for a while? Can we speed our way through? Or do we have to stop? Man, I don't know. I wish I knew the future. I don't. So we have to reclaim the 50. Then we have to stop going down. At what area do we stop going down? Well, it's when we break this downtrend right here, which ironically corresponds with the 50 MA. So if we make it back above 510, Hey, we stopped going down, right? We recapture number three. Ah, by making it the 518, 519, we would stop going down. Correct. Full candles. Yes, we actually have some full candles. We get two of them. We did have one, two, three, four, five, six uh, full candles in a row. So six versus two, you tell me what number's bigger. Well, clearly it's six. So we need to do more. We got to get more hollow candles. But so far, cautiously optimistic. Then what do we need to do? Well, we got to start going back up. So how do we start going back up? I just also told you. We need to make sure that we set a higher low. So wherever we shoot, we have to back test, hold, and then go higher. Remember, these are daily charts. And for QQQ, if we make it to the target of roughly 443.71, we would also be above our 50 MA. So let's make this even simpler because the daily chart is great, but we want to understand what is really simple. I'll tell you. This is even simpler. So for us to start going back up with higher lows and higher highs, what do we need? Well, we got to reverse the bear reversal here. So we're going to need to see weekly higher lows with an S, right? Higher lows and higher highs. So, so far we got one higher low. If we get a second higher low next week, that means we've set a higher low. We now have one and two higher lows. So far, we do not yet have a weekly higher high. So what do we need? We need both. We need to see higher lows and higher highs. Higher lows are not enough. Higher lows only mean we're playing defense. It does not mean we're expanding. So like I said, we need to what? We need to make it to the target and then go higher. That's it. For this week, that would either mean we need to make it to uh, 515 on SPY. 515 is where? Well, it's below 519. So we can definitely make it there this week. But unless we form progress to the upside, I don't really trust this move. Why? Well, because yesterday we had a fail break. It was nice, but it wasn't enough. We did not actually break the downtrend. So that's it. Uh, we got the targets right here. What I would encourage you to do is to watch the video now queued up on the left-hand side. If not, maybe you want to subscribe and come hang out with me at 9.15 and 9.30 tomorrow, where I'll provide more commentary as we go through the market open. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you on the next video.